All right, we're recording and go. And go. Here's the part Drew just makes something funny up on the spot. Maybe he sings a song about a bus girl. Maybe he does a little dance and spins on his head in the background. Maybe he talks about pajamas. I don't know. Maybe he looks in the camera, says, you guys are doing a great job. You're doing a real good job. And you are you are doing a good job. But this camera, this thing is sterile. It looks back at me. It's like a creepy guy looking out of shades just because you're in his front lawn. Big deal, man. Maybe I'm taking a walk. You know what I mean? Do you have something you want no, to talk about? You know about? what? That's it. I'm not doing an intro this week. I am not doing one. It's not happening. No intro. We're on strike. Yep. This is episode nine. Check it out. Right across this country into this starlight. 12,000 miles turn back. Do it again. No destination. It's just a journey. The first project that we dove into this week is our bed platform. This is made up of four individual pieces of plywood. There's three smaller ones on the outside and one larger piece in the middle. That gets hinges and handles because it acts like a door to lift the bed so you can access the storage underneath, the plumbing, mm -hmm. anything that you choose to keep underneath the bed. In an RV, a van, a bus, anything that's in a humid climate, the mat mattress can't just be set onto a piece of wood or a platform. It needs to have ventilation underneath or you will have problems with mold and mildew. Our solution for preventing mold and mildew in our buses is a combination of slats in the wood for ventilation, Dendry, which is a product that lifts your mattress off your platform, and also kilts mold and mildew paint so we used a router to cut slats through the three quarter inch plywood uh, we put a straight edge on there to follow so we can have nice even spacing of all of our cuts and once you do that you're going to allow air to kind of ventilate in and any moisture to sort of fall out and not just sit on the plywood and which could potentially create mold or any other sort of issues from there, we took all four pieces of ply, laid them out on our table, and everything got a coat of kilts, mold, and mildew. We discovered this product last year when we were doing our bus build, and this is because we experienced this exact problem. It was 10 days from building our bed platform and putting the mattress on to having mold or mildew underneath our mattress. In 10 days this happened, and this was the time that we were waiting for our Dendry to ship and arrive. We knew we needed this product, we just didn't have it yet, and the mildew had already happened. So we discovered kilts, mold and mildew. Now that we have both the slats and the Dendry, you could say that it was overkill to also paint with kilt, but we really like to have that extra insurance that there will be no mildew under the mattress because it's not a good problem to have. So the three things in combination we mm -hmm. think are pretty sure to just knock that problem out. Once the paint was dry, we took all four pieces back into the bus. Two of them got screwed right into the bed frame. The very thin piece that would go at the foot of the bed, we left free so that you could pull that piece up to work on the plumbing and access all of the pipes and everything in the corner of the bus. But the other two got secured in and the large piece in the middle got two hinges, two handles, so that you can then lift it up on the hinges. And the middle door, you might be wondering why we didn't do the whole platform. Why doesn't the whole platform lift up? That's because of the upper cabinets above the bed. You would only be able to lift it so far. And even with the mattress, it does kind of impede the upper movement of that mattress, but not as much if 
the whole platform moved. So by doing the little door in the middle that clears both the closet and the overhead cabinet, you can get as much movement as possible while still having the mattress on there. Right, and then if you took the mattress off, you could get complete access. Whereas if it was a full size, it would hit the cabinet and you could only get in. You have to kind of duck in there. So it allows you to completely step in there if you need to do that. So with the combination of putting ventilation into your mattress platform, den dry, and the kilts, we're sure to not have a problem with mildew in this bus. Be rock solid. And next up, patent pending in 17 states, not including Alaska and Hawaii, <laughs> the modular couch booth bed design. This is something that we designed when we were doing our first bus. This little piece of furniture can be so many different things and that is really, really important in these small spaces that you're making the best use of what little space you mm -hmm. have. How this design works is a combination of a few different things. There's two booth ends, and those are the actual structures that you build. And in the middle, the thing that bridges the gap to make it a couch or a bed is a table. That table has a leaf with locking hinges so that you can bring the leaf up to make an even longer table mm -hmm. for when you have a four person booth or you are in bed mode, it completes the bed. Each booth end has slide out ends that extend as far as you want. And that's really just the most important feature of the whole design is that you can expand and retract the ends of the whole design to create all these different things. As you can tell, we really love this design. It works so well for us. We use it every day. And so it was just a no brainer to put it into this bus as well. It is a really good use of the space. And no matter who buys this bus, it can work for them. If they work from the road, they can have the booth. If they have a family, there's enough space for everyone to eat at the table. There's couches and guest beds. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really versatile. And we just had to add it into this bus as well. Yeah. And the nice thing when we were building this one, well, when you were building this one, was you got to follow the plan that you had written out to download and go step by step. And it made it a lot easier because you just had the cut list for one to cut your time down. You're not measuring things as you go. And I felt like you got that done like what, one day or something? Super quick. Less than a day, yeah. I was able to build this design. That's because I know the design inside and out. We recommend a full day in our plan, that's the time estimation. The first part to building this piece of furniture was to make all of our cuts from the cut list in the plan. I took the opportunity to just get all the cutting out of the way right in the beginning so I could just pick up pieces and install them. That was so nice. Yeah. Once I had everything cut, we started to assemble the framing. Skinned everything with the pieces of ply so it had a backrest, it had all the sides and facing. Then we installed the slides, spaced everything out accordingly, made sure that it didn't stick and that everything was in the right place. And then we did some finishing touches and a little bit of sanding to make when we start painting make our lives a little bit easier. We took this opportunity to use our downloadable plan and actually build from it so that we could quadruple check our downloadable plan and make sure that it's the best it can be. But let me tell you how luxurious it was mm -hmm. to go into this with a cut list, step-by-step -step instructions, yeah. and diagrams. So when you're building this booth, there is always this potential hurdle because you're building in a bus. There's usually a wheel well somewhere in the way. Depending on the length of your bus, you might not run into this where you're placing it, but we have both times. So we took one end of the booth into the bus and lined it up with where it would rest on the wheel well. And then we traced 
the line of the angle on the piece of wood, took it back out, and then just cut that out and then had to then reframe it to support on there. Like I said, you could probably figure that out, but I think it'd be even more work. We have done our framing around the wheel well this way both times by just making the full design and then cutting out the piece for the wheel well instead of designing around the wheel well, which we think it would just take so much more time and effort. I think that it's a little bit easier to just build it and cut it out. Also, when we cut out the piece for the wheel well, we repurpose all those pieces of framing. If there's any right. screws in there, we pull them out and we use them again. So don't waste any of the material or as little material as possible. Use all those pieces again if you can in your reframing. And it's such a small piece of the whole design that uh, it's not a big deal and it does save time. Yeah, it's just a choice of what you wanna do. It could be done either way. Once the whole design was finished, we had reframed around the gas intake and the wheel well, everything was ready to go. All there was left to do was test it out. And so we just slid the slides in and out. We sat on both ends, made sure everything was in place. Yeah, grab your chewini, kick your legs up and give it a try. As we mentioned, we sell this design as a downloadable plan. So if you want all the specifics of how to build this, you can head over to our website, ourwaytorome.com. And we have this available as a downloadable plan under the resources section, or you can find it in the description below. We will link it there as well, or maybe somewhere in a button up here. So if you wanna build this design in your own bus, we will walk you through it step-by-step step down to every screw, every material type. This plan has a full cut list, a full materials list with links. It gives you the cushion sizes. It shows you how to frame around the wheel well down to every last little detail. And because we built this from our plan for the new bus, we just released a brand new update and if you buy the plan once, you will get all future updates for free. The last part of this design, and I think the most beautiful, especially this time, you did an incredible job. Looks very nice. You did, I think, what you called a herringbone design. Yes. Yes, on the table. So it's the table and the leaf that go in the middle that also act as the center part of the couch or bed when they are down. It's super cool and it looks so nice. It just brings a whole bunch more character and flavor to the bus when you have that table set up. Uh, but great job, I gotta say that. Thank you. The first step for this table was to cut pieces of half inch ply. I found the middle point so that your herringbone design will go right down the center of the table. You don't want it curving in yeah. weird direction. So you find your center point and you build off of that. We decided to go with a hardwood maple, and that's because softer woods can't really be used for tabletops. You could, you could do anything you want, sure. but it's gonna get marked up really easily when it's used for a tabletop, because generally, you know, you're setting things on there, you're throwing right. keys on it, and it's gonna get dinged up really quickly. So we went with a hardwood for the tabletop, and I picked maple because it, sort of matches the other woods that we have going on in the bus. And we were going to seal it with the same sealer that we use all throughout the bus. And I thought that it would match the other woods really well. Yeah, you got some really nice pieces on this one with a lot of color and a lot of different variation in the wood grain. Next was to cut and rip down the pieces of maple. And once I did that and I had all the pieces ready to go, I laid them out to make sure that they looked how I wanted them to look and so that I could evenly space darker pieces from lighter pieces to create a piece of artwork. Yeah. Make sure that the grains looked nice and everything was good to go. Then I took each piece and I brushed glue evenly on the back of each piece, pressed it in place and used an air gun to shoot nails through the back of the table, not the face because you'd be able to see every little nail hole on the face of your table. So I shot them through the back and then took a larger piece of ply, put it on top and used clamps to just sandwich everything together and let it sit for a few hours so that everything could just press together 
and dry. While the larger table was drying in its clamped sandwich, I did the same exact thing to make the leaf. Once both of them were dry and had been pressed together, I did all the edging, and then it was time to seal them with water locks. We've been using water locks all throughout this build. Yeah. We really like it, and especially for a tabletop, it waterproofs the wood and protects it so that you can eat you know, dinner right. on it. If you spill drinks on it, it's not gonna damage the wood in any way. So we want the wood to match all the other woods. We did three coats of water locks mm -hmm. with a little bit of light sanding in between. As soon as the water locks went on, the grain of the wood <laughs> came out. And yeah. I feel like I feel like such a nerd with woodworking uh. because I got I got so excited. I was like, Drew, Drew, look at this wood grain. It's so beautiful. Yeah, you start to see the color and the contrast in it. It is really beautiful. It turned out so beautifully, and we set it in between the two booth ends for its its final form. Yes, and it's awesome, so good job. Thank you. The table is really a center point in our bus. It's where we sit down at the booth to do our remote work. It's where we sit on the couch and watch movies. There's game nights and dinner with friends. All of these kind of adventures in our bus center around the table. And so I wanted to make something that whoever gets this bus will really cherish and love, and it can be the centerpiece for all their new adventures. Yeah, and the one in our bus is really nice, but this one is just that much better. It looks so cool, and uh, whoever gets it is gonna be super excited, I think. This one is a level up. We ordered these special locking hinges that sort of go two different ways and what they allow is for when you pull the table leaf up it locks it into place and they support it off of the table it's really pretty amazing engineering i remember when we got them uh on our build i was terrified of them because i thought i was going to snap my they fingers are under like a pressure. bear trap yeah yeah unfortunately they didn't come in yet so we'll have to put that into next week's video but they're really interesting it's really good design and it's pretty impressive what you can do with it Next week, we will be putting those hinges on as long as they come in the mail. Yep. We will also be making the table leg and a whole bunch of other things that we have planned. That's it for this week. And this is the part where we talk about how we can't believe it's already episode nine. Yeah, I can't believe that. But this is also the part where you click on a new video because you realize there's like 10 seconds left. Nobody watches the last 10 seconds because what are we going to say? Something interesting? Is there going to be an Easter egg in there? Are we going to say gonna something important? Crazy? Probably not. No, um, we're not. Yeah, do what you guys do and um, like the channel and all that stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Do all those things you do on the internet and we will see you next time. Later.